So looking at um, our highlights for um, the first six months of the year, um, we see for the revenue is down by 10% um, or 7.5% when we adjust for the, the fluctuation in the APG market prices. Um, this is mainly related to a reduction in volumes across our segments, bulk, industrial cylinders, and APG bulk, um, as well as hard goods. Um, we see um, better performance and or solid performance, especially around healthcare and LPG, LPG cylinders, um, as well as good pricing performance across all segments, uh, which is mitigating um, the lower volumes. Um, operating profit um, or EBIT is down 26.5%, standing at 336 million rand. Um, this is mainly related to lower volumes and um, lower economies of scale, as well as the APG sub, um, supply constraints related to the um, um, local refineries being shut, as, as Skalk has already described before. Um, related to that, the operating profit margin was down 270 basis point to 12.5%. EBITDA is down 17.3%, sitting at 545 million rand. Good news on the operating cash flow front, we're sitting at 502 million rand, up 3.5%. This is mainly um, attributed to a strong performance on trade working capital. Um, and here it's worth mentioning the performance on debtors management, um, so w which is contributing to strong operating cash flow here. Um, both headlines earnings per share and basic earnings per share are down around 31%. So HEPS is sitting at 76.5 cents per share and um, basic earnings per share is sitting at 77.8 cents per share. ROSI is down 510 basis points at 16.3%, um, mainly related to lower earnings. Just, just the key focus areas for, for the next few months. We've had this um, as some feedback, you can see that where the blue blocks of, you know, it's an indication of probability or, or completion. We, we, we need to strengthen our hard goods business in terms of technology, capacity, capability, um, volume through the factory. So the past number of years we've been working on various initiatives and later in this year, um, we, we hope to bring to fruition a, a you know, strategic alignment that could substantially strengthen you know, our hard goods business. We still view it as, as critical um, and strategic. We, I spoke about the model, having a, what we call a one-stop shop for welding, welding gases, um, which links right back into atmospheric gases and you saw the resilience of that business as well. So yeah, it's, it's a, that's a good initiative. We'll, we'll probably conclude that during this year. In difficult conditions, we try to improve asset utilization. Now this typically, um, for example, driving uh, you know our, our utilization of key assets. This includes vehicles, filling sites. We've we've shut down certain filling sites to have other filling sites optimally um, you know loaded. We, we we tried to send out our vehicles with 95 plus percent loaded on the cylinders, well within you know still the, the, the safety uh, requirements and internal safety protocols. On the ASUs, uh, we've had high, fairly high demand. You saw the, you saw the, you know, resilience of the atmospheric gas business, but still some instances where you have to can campaign. So, if you have got full bulk tanks, um, you know, we, we shut down for a few days, uh, use the current inventory, and start up again. Otherwise, we just ventilate very expensive electricity. So, these are just a few comments or a few examples of really driving to improve the current assets. Um, obviously that will feed into that ROSI of 20% 20, 20 plus that we want and that we have achieved in the past. Continued growth in LPG, I think some comments have been made. We've seen it you know, over the past six months, um, you know, a big reduction in bulk, but we believe, yes, mostly affecting automotive, hospitality or bulk, you know, to, uh, as I explained to like shopping malls and so forth, but, but also um, uh, iron steel. There are some large iron steel customers that use LPG in their processes. That was not necessarily deemed, a, you know, an essential business. 
So we've seen some of those volumes picking up. And I think we're really focusing on how do we reach more households um, in terms of cylinders. We, I mentioned that we did invest into another 70,000 cylinders, which arrived in June this year, and which will be rolled out again, mostly into this domestic drive um, through, through strategic partners, um, you know, to take care of the front end business. I don't think Afrox is uh, at this stage, you know, um, aligned to do that, you know, right in the front domestic areas, low cost um, housing or low income housing type applications. So therefore we aligned with, with strategic partners to do this for us and it's been very successful. You saw a 1% growth in volume even in these days um, with increased unemployment unfortunately um, and the, the total stress of the you know of the financial system uh, the retail footprint review you know after us got 30 plus what we call gas and gears retail centers uh, this is where mostly walk-in customers get serviced to be buying from welding rods to filling you know in certain uh, gas and gears called LPG filling you know, filling facility or uh, exchange a cylinder or whatever the, the setup is. So we're also looking at the, you know, the volumes of profitability. We've shut a number of these. Again, uh, maybe linking to asset utilization that we consolidate certain areas. Other areas that we've, that we rather than manage through agents, um, people, for example, or individuals living in the community, able to reach maybe wider, typically, your, your, you know, your remote areas. Um, so yeah, this is ongoing. Um, in terms of, of large capital investment, capital thrown, I mean, we don't see uh, a lot out there <laughs> at this moment in time. It's about sweating the current assets. We, we, we're aware of the you know, government talking about um, large capital infrastructure, 340 billion um, water projects, housing and commercial developments, waterfront developments in you know coastal areas, agricultural developments, road and transport, solar, thermal, renewable energy, smart cities around in Syria. Yes, we believe that in time, uh, maybe not tomorrow, but in time, there will be growth opportunities for our products, uh, you know, linked to these growth initiatives. Also talking about Mozambique, um, the northern Mozambique, uh, that project to continue. So yes, there's, we would say there's some growth in future. Um, how this will play out in terms of volumes and revenues at this moment in time is difficult to say to you. So uh, to predict. So for you know, just focusing on the medium term is again all around efficiencies and um, you know and, and 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 value creation, as I've said. In terms of a cash position, you know, balance sheet position. I've had the question before. We we we. We're happy that we kept our powder dry um, at, at this stage. It, it gives us the ability to pay dividends and it gives us a, a cash reserve and fallback position in very uncertain um, you know, economic conditions as we've seen. Of course, when the right opportunities presents itself, which, which we, we hope would be you know, in the next foreseeable future, a number of years, of course, there would be um, considerations for, for investments.